Spiritual Experiences In your yoga, one says japa, concentrates on the divine, and tries to clear the mind as much as possible so as to be receptive to the light and its work. When experiences start to come, is there any map we can follow? Mother Mira, experiences will come and will go. Sometimes devotees ask my opinion of an experience, but do not listen to my advice if it does not feed their egotism. It is not useful to think about whether experiences are real or unreal. Even by thinking, you cannot determine whether they are true or not. Whatever experiences come, great or small, it is better to offer them to the divine and to continue doing japa. Otherwise, your concentration will be on the experience and not on the divine. How am I to understand the mystical experiences that I have? Mother Mira, the answers and directions will come. The mind has to be prepared first. The experiences will happen, and the light will prepare the mind to understand the experiences. Should people be silent about their experiences? Mother Mira, whether or not to tell our experiences depends on the hearers, their level of interest, and depth of understanding. It is of no use speaking of experiences to those who are not interested. When you appear in a dream, are you really there? Mother Mira, it depends on the circumstances of the dream. How can I tell which visions come from the divine and which come from my own fantasy? Mother Mira, it is difficult sometimes. People like to make up things, and the mind is very clever. The visions that come from the divine change you. They make you more loving and more humble, and more proud in the good way, proud of the divine. Can a visionary experience of being God lead to power madness? Mother Mira, not if the vision is real. If the vision is real, you see the greatness of God. A real vision brings adoration of the divine, and in that adoration there can be no vanity. Visions are helpful, and you must be grateful for them. They are signs, they deepen faith, they show you what you must aim for. But the real work is in building love and silence, in changing your whole character and mind. Visions come and go, the silence remains. The silence brings continual connection, continual presence. As we awaken, we realize that we are part of the divine, not the whole divine. This realization curtails any pride, doesn't it? Mother Mira, if there is pride or vanity, then you are not awake. The really great saints and yogis are always the most humble. Humility is love. Humility is what the heart knows. True joy is humble because it is pure and given. A humble man is always quick to see his mistakes. Unless you are humble, the divine will not use you. My power will only pass through you when you are clear. Otherwise, it would be dangerous for you. You must keep yourself clear at all times. The ego will keep on trying to seize for itself what the soul is learning. Sometimes, when I have had big experiences, I wonder if I am mad. Mother Mira, if you must be mad, be mad in a good way, mad with divine love. What is the third eye? What does it see? At what stage does it open? Mother Mira, this eye comprehends all things. It sees the whole picture. For example, it can see the background to the actions of others. At what stage it opens varies with the individual. It is not intuitive. It sees everything clearly. What is samadhi like? Mother Mira, people in real samadhi are above the five elements and do not need food, air, and water. They are blissful, powerful, and complete in themselves. For those who have attained samadhi, it is easy to reach realization. 
Is the attainment of samadhi necessary for a realization of God? Mother Mira, no, it is only one way, one path, the jnana path. In the bhakti path, we can realize the divine with love. With a successful family life, we can realize. With the devotion of Mirabai, we can realize. Anasuya worshipped her husband a saint as divine and became realized. What is an appropriate attitude to have towards one's spiritual experiences? Mother Mira, first, be grateful. Offer them to him who sent them. He gave them to you. Give them back to him with love. Never think that you are special or chosen. Know that if you do, it is the ego that is thinking these things. The very thing that these experiences are trying to overcome can use them. The ego is clever. It can use even the experience of the divine. Remember that however extraordinary the experiences, there are always further and greater experiences. The mind is finite, but the spirit is infinite. There is no limit to transformation. The transformation I am doing is within the being and power of God and so limitless by nature. There are many ways in which the mental and vital powers can imitate and pervert the spiritual. It takes time to become aware of how these different powers work. It is hard sometimes to tell where exactly an experience comes from. This is where discipline is necessary and purification and the grace of the mother. Prayer. What is the importance of asking the divine for something? Mother Mira, if you want anything, love, truth, or courage, for example, you must ask for it. If you ask God for anything humbly and lovingly, you will receive it. But you must ask with your whole heart so that your heart can be empty and God can fill it. If there is any pride in it, he cannot fill it as much. God wants to give you everything. You must learn how to let him. For this you need surrender. The reward of surrender is bliss and knowledge. What should I ask for? Mother Mira, ask for everything, like a child asks its mother for everything, without shame. Do not stop at peace of mind or purity of heart or surrender. Demand everything. Don't be satisfied with anything less than everything. If you ask, you will receive. If you receive, you will have to bear. What is the relationship of karma and prayer? What is the use of prayer if all that happens is according to our karma? Mother Mira, if we only accept our karma and act according to that, there will be no end to it. Our karma will continue for many, many lives. However, if we pray and offer the fruits of our actions to the divine, then our karma can be stopped, lessened, or transformed. How do you work with a person's karma? How are hindrances removed? Mother Mira, some karmas can be removed, but others are very big and cannot be removed. However, in these cases, I can help people to dwell less and less on their problems and thus greatly reduce the pain. If we believe in God, when difficulties come in ordinary life, we do not feel them so strongly and can pass through them with a light heart. Thinking about problems too much only makes them worse, and even a little problem can lead to a big explosion in the end. As to how hindrances are removed, there are no words to describe this. Do all people have their own protective angels? Mother Mira, there are different angels for different purposes. They only come when needed. When we are having problems, does writing to you help? Is praying enough? Mother Mira, those devotees with much heart always want to write, whatever the problem. They always turn to the mother. Some other devotees with much mind do not want to write because they are afraid of my having a record of their problems, which they want to keep hidden. In general, people should write with their problems 
and then they will get direct help. Though some people can receive answers directly through prayer, the prayers of many others may not be deeply sincere, and thus they do not receive help so quickly. Many people delay in writing about their problems, but when they finally do write and mail their letters, they may get an answer immediately, long before I receive the letter. Each person must decide for himself or herself whether or not to write. Is there a need for an intermediary in prayer? Sometimes it seems difficult to pray to God directly. Mother Mira, those who pray to Paramatman directly have a strong belief in Paramatman. Because they have confidence that God will help them, they do not go to intermediaries. Whether there are intermediaries or not, in the end, all prayers go to Paramatman. Does grace come from you directly to us or through the intermediary of our own Atman, our soul? Mother Mira, grace comes directly. There is no intermediary. God is always helping us. Can average people effectively pray for others even though we are so small? Mother Mira, however small we may be, It is helpful to ask Paramatman to remove our obstacles and those of others. Prayer always helps. In the eyes of Paramatman, we are always small children. In certain spiritual traditions, one way of helping others is to hold up their image calmly in the silence of deep meditation. Are techniques such as this helpful, and are there others that you could recommend? Mother Mira, it is better simply to pray and ask the Divine directly to help others and protect them. When a friend is going through difficulty and words don't help, what can we do? Mother Mira, just pray silently for the person. This is the most helpful thing one can do. When we feel your energy strongly, is it helpful to direct it to others who need help? Mother Mira, you cannot transmit the light to others. The light that comes to you is helpful only for you. Can we help others to be enlightened? Mother Mira, prayer for others is useful for this, and it helps us as well to remember the divine. It is difficult to find time to pray during the day. Mother Mira, it is not difficult. It is a question of making a habit of prayer. Is it possible to talk to God? Mother Mira, when we offer everything to God, we will know He heard because results come. Someday, when we are ripe, we will directly hear the voice of God. Love and Devotion Why is devotion to the Divine important? Mother Mira, if you have devotion, you will get everything. How does one grow in devotion? Mother Mira, one should have sincere aspiration to develop devotion and pray sincerely to the Divine. Sometimes I weep for God. Is this good? Mother Mira, Mr. Reddy used to say often how strange it was that men would weep for the loss of money or a woman, but not spend one sleepless night praying to God. Ramakrishna used to say that also. Look how much he wept and prayed for the Divine Mother. It is a great thing to weep for God. How often do people weep for a lover who then throws them away? But God remembers every small prayer, every tear. A tear is a door through which I can come. How can I come into a heart that doesn't long for me? Why should people feel it is a shameful thing to weep for God? Look at Krishna's gopis. Look at Mirabai. You must love greatly to desire the great love of God. You must leave all other loves for this one. Yet to do this, you have to know the value of the divine. Many lives can go past without one taste of divine bliss. If you do not want to waste this life, the holy desire for God is essential. 
Does one ever give up the desire for God? Mother Mira, even the avatar has to desire to be in God at every moment. And when the avatar dies, he desires with all his or her being to be united with God. Realization is the beginning of the true desire for an even deeper union. God is formless, but in order to love the divine, isn't it necessary to love one of the formed aspects of God, Krishna or Jesus, for example? Mother Mira, one can love the divine directly and also through gods, angels, and gurus. How should we practice bhakti, devotion? Mother Mira, it is not necessary to offer flowers and incense. Whatever you do can be offered without expectation of return. Love your master with sincerity and surrender. How are the paths of jnana and bhakti related to each other? Mother Mira, to be a jnani is to know, and the more that you know the divine, the more you love. To be a bhakti is to choose the path of love, and the more you love the divine, the more you know. Sometimes we have concentration for the divine, but sometimes we are attracted to other matters. Mother Mira, when you think that you are not thinking enough of the divine, this is aspiration, which also goes to the divine. I do not always have a genuine feeling of love and devotion for the divine. Mother Mira, to remember the divine, even if it is only done with the mental, will lead one to the experience of the divine. I feel rejected by God sometimes. Mother Mira, when we don't feel the love of God, we feel his absence as a punishment. When we feel the love of God, we wonder how we did not feel it before. What is your opinion of atheism? Mother Mira, there are no atheists. Everyone is devoted to something, whether it is called art or anything else. What is the difference between our genuine need for the mother and our sincere love for her? Mother Mira, these are different. When we need, this is for ourself. When we love her, we have no expectation of anything. Is it a problem for a devotee to love you personally as well as to love the divine in you? Mother Mira, if you are fixed on my outer personality and outer form, conflict and disappointment can arise. But if your inner relation to me is good, then all is well. When we begin to feel the extraordinary intensity of your love for us, does this mean we are beginning to return it? Mother Mira, there is only one love and one energy. When you are feeling it, you are beginning to understand it. How does bhakti become non-dual? Mother Mira, duality exists until we merge in the divine. Then there is only the one. As love grows toward the master, we merge gradually in the divine. The process goes slowly so that we can have a growing taste of the divine. If it doesn't go slowly, then the body cannot feel it. If we don't feel it, then the devotion we need for our transformation doesn't grow. When we get complete realization, then every aspect of us goes into the divine. Surrender and Offering By teaching in silence and by bringing down the force of the Paramatman light, you are asking for a very deep and very intense surrender. Would you help us to understand clearly what surrender is? Mother Mira, to offer everything to the divine is surrender. To give our lives to the divine is surrender. Simplicity is surrender. When we are simple, the ego will dissolve by itself. When we are simple, the answers will come. Always to remember, no matter how great we are, that there is something greater, the divine, is surrender. Not to be egoistic is surrender. To be humble is surrender. 
What is surrender? Mother Mira, to surrender is to offer whatever you do to the divine and to follow scrupulously what the wise tell you. One important form of surrender is to live by the rules of whatever religion you choose. Isn't surrendering being weak? Mother Mira, no. Real surrender is not weakness. It is the strongest thing a man can do. You have to be strong to give away everything. Why should one offer everything to the divine? Mother Mira, offering everything, pure and impure, is the best and quickest way to develop spiritually. If you offer everything to the divine, the divine will accept and change it, even the worst things. It is not what you offer, but that you offer, which is important. Offer everything, and you will acquire the habit of thinking always about God. That will change you. What is offering? Mother Mira, loving politeness. Whatever you do, give it to God with a grateful and humble heart. How does one offer something to God? Mother Mira, we can say that we are offering something to God in whatever way we want by using words, or by just feeling it. If we want to offer something good, we can simply thank God for it. With negative things, we can offer them to God and ask God to take them away. Or by simply offering them, we can come to feel embarrassed by what we are giving to God and so begin to change. May we enjoy the material life? Mother Mira, You may enjoy the material life, but offer it to the divine. What does it mean when Krishna tells Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita to give up the fruits of all actions? Mother Mira, if you think, I do this action, you become egotistic. Instead of being egotistic, offer everything to the divine. If you offer everything to the divine, there is no ego. If there is no ego, you become divine. How does one develop aspiration? Mother Mira, offer everything you do to the divine, and this will develop aspiration. Many devotees bring flowers and presents. What is the best thing we can offer to you? Is it also our dark ego movements? Mother Mira, Yes, especially the ego, and your joy. Whatever you offer should be offered sincerely, not as a duty. But the ego is horrible. Mother Mira, nothing is horrible for the divine. Is the nature of the offering to the divine important? Mother Mira, a child brings its mother a marble, a snail, a stick. The mother doesn't look at the gift. She is happy the child thought of her. What is any gift to God? God has everything. You are only giving back to God what He gave to you. The gift is not important, only the love. The Ego How does the ego arise? Mother Mira, the body, vital, and especially the mind, thinking they are the self, brings in egoism. How does the ego block the truth force when it is so weak? Mother Mira, compared to the divine, the ego is weak, but in the world it is strong. Why do people take the world as real? Mother Mira, because they concentrate on things and see diversity rather than unity. In the world, the ego is strong. How do we get away from the ego without running from the world? Mother Mira, if you grow inside, the ego will drop. Meditation, japa, and prayer weaken the ego. Must the dismantling of the ego always feel like a death? Mother Mira, to achieve realization, a dying to the old self, the ego is necessary. But why be sad about it? What has the old self given you that you should love it so? The divine self will give you all things 
and also give you bliss. Do not think in terms of giving up anything. Think of growing. Think of always growing stronger and more loving and more complete. Then what you wanted yesterday, you will not want today. And what you wanted today, tomorrow, you will see is not useful. Discipline must be there and control, not in the name of death, but in the name of love and true life. You have to cut a tree sometimes to make it straight and to help it grow. Is the death of the ego necessary? Mother Mira, for God, no ego is necessary. To live in this world, the ego is necessary. You can choose. Pain on the path. What should people do with the fear that comes in the process of spiritual unfolding? Mother Mira, they should not be afraid of it. It is common and natural. It cannot be stopped. But it will go. As joy will come and go, so will fear. Accept this simply and go on. How should I deal with the fear that sometimes arises? Mother Mira, why grieve or be afraid? Go deeper into joy. Work with joy. That is the way to end grief and fear. What should I do about the despair I feel when I fail? Mother Mira, failing is not important. Everyone will fail for some time. Everyone will make mistakes. But you must not be discouraged. You must never think, I cannot do this. You must know it is not you that is doing the work. It is the mother. You must have faith in her. Of course, you must work too, but in a peaceful way, with an open heart. My mind is always creating difficulties. What should I do? Mother Mira, try to be wise enough to know that you do not know. Then the divine can lead you forward into true knowledge, calmly, stage by stage. Give me your mind without fear, and I will expand it. When the heart suffers, it is easy to transform its suffering into joy. But when the mind creates and lives a fantasy, it is extremely hard to change it. So be very careful. Do not let your mind become your worst enemy. Sometimes I feel like giving up hope. Mother Mira, at no moment should a man give up hope. If he gives up hope, he is killing himself. There is always hope. But a man must be humble to hope. Mother Mira, he must know himself. That will make him humble. Then he can have true hope. Why is it that after people experience some measure of your light, they are later confronted with negative moods and strong desires? Mother Mira, emotions such as anger do not arise in order to block our progress. They are there within us and cannot always be controlled. They must come out so that we can understand them and offer them to the divine. All that is inside will come out. Even with developed people, emotions such as anger arise, but the quality of the anger changes, although the quantity may remain the same. These emotions remain until we merge with Paramatman. Why must our weaknesses and faults come into focus so clearly just when we are trying so hard to emphasize the shinier sides of our personalities. Mother Mira, in order to do my work, people must know their bad points, and they must know these completely so that they are not their own victims. The force can work only through the humble. You must know the difference between the human and the divine in you so you can transform the human by the divine. In spite of everything I have experienced with you, I still sometimes doubt you. Mother Mira, doubt is useful. It keeps you honest. Sometimes people say how much they love me and love God, but I know what is in their hearts. It is better when someone says, I love you, knowing all the hatred and doubt that is still within them. 
then it means something. Then the love can grow. Whatever doubts come, however frightening they are, know they are the creation of your mind. Only the light is real. It is difficult for the ego to accept this. But do not be ashamed of doubt. You are human, and these things come to the human being. Use every energy to change yourself. There is only one energy, and when you know that, you can turn every impulse towards me. Offer everything up, however bad you think it is, to be transformed. Suffering Religions such as Christianity and Buddhism take the view that suffering is good insofar as it drives us to seek God. Does suffering have a role in sadhana? Mother Mira, suffering is one way, but not the main way. It comes by itself. You don't have to ask for it. If you are suffering, naturally you will ask for happiness. But the divine never says that suffering is necessary. This idea is created by human beings. The divine asks us to be happy, harmonious, and peaceful. How does suffering work to bring about change? Mother Mira, people suffer a great deal in life without knowing why. When there is grace, you are helped to know why and to change. The greatest pain is ignorance. When the pain is clear, you can find its source and can change. What is your attitude to suffering in the body? Mother Mira, pain belongs to the body, so it must be accepted. Can we alleviate our own suffering? Mother Mira, when we are insincere, we feel suffering. When we are sincere, there is no suffering. We are concentrating on the mother so that even if we have physical suffering, we will not feel it. We cannot say that there is no pain at all, but as we do not feel that it belongs to us, it is weakened. If we have faith, we feel less pain. How we consider suffering depends on our mentality. When we offer pain to the divine, we are free of it. Focusing on the pain only increases it. Humans make the pain more than it is by concentrating on it. Why did the divine create the world in this way so that there is pain? Mother Mira, by their mental creations, humans magnify the small pain that is in the world into a big drama. Intellect. Adi Lakshmi said, How many times I have seen it. People come in here with so many questions, but just sitting with Ma sweeps everything from their minds. They come with questions, and they go away with peace. The peace and joy are the answer. Can language convey the truth? Mother Mira, language can point to the truth. What is the importance of understanding philosophic systems? Mother Mira, studying different paths is useful because it gives a knowledge of the path in general, as well as a respect for other traditions. If we know only a few paths, we may hold a limited, rigid view. A broad background is better. It helps us when we have experiences by giving us clarification and confidence that we are going in the right direction. Which teacher's writings do you especially recommend? Mother Mira, each religion has its basic books. It is helpful to read these fundamental works of any religion. Of course, we can read other books that appeal, but the basic things we must know— Read the works of many sages and saints, not just one, in order to get a variety of views. I have noticed that I find out what I need to know only at the moment when I am strong enough to bear that knowledge. Mother Mary, yes, there is no use in knowing things before you are ready. That way leads to confusion. Should we try to curb the use of the intellect? Mother Mira, if the mind does not disturb or destroy others, then it can go on doing what it may. 
The clarity that I need in order to do your work, is it of the mind? Mother Mira, the clarity is of the spirit, of the light. But the mind is useful. Train it to be awake. Train it to be lit up with the spirit. Make it a servant and not a master. There is great joy for the mind in following the spirit. Realization Can we regard Paramatman as the self? Mother Mira, only when you merge with Paramatman. What is the Atman, the soul? Mother Mira, the Atman comes from the Paramatman. Just as the Atman is essential for the body, so is Paramatman important for the Atman. The Atman guides our development and is the basis or root cause of all our physical and subtle bodies. It works through all the various bodies to experience everything, and then will take all this experience back to Paramatman in realization. What is our relationship to the soul? Mother Mira, the soul acts as a protector during our lives and is always with us. It has no wishes of its own. It is not only a witness or a guide, but also helps our development. Free from the influence of our actions, it remains permanently with us through our lives until we unite with the divine. Is it the Atman that is ignorant of its divine origin? Mother Mira, the Atman has no desires and is free from suffering. It comes from Paramatman and has the qualities of the light. It is not the Atman that becomes realized. What is the process of realization? Mother Mira, the body, vital, and mind must learn how to cooperate with the Atman. When we have experienced everything we need to experience, the Atman with all the sheaths can merge into Paramatman. If in meditation I could quiet the mind, would there be a realization of the Atman? Mother Mira, the mind and the vital gradually change and understand more before realization occurs. When people claim to realize God, are they really realizing the Atman? Mother Mira, many people say they have realized Some people say they have realized in order to avoid ordinary obligations. The truly realized do not say they have realized. Realization of the soul is not full realization. What I mean by realization is realization of Paramatman, not the Atman. When we realize God, is it only part of God or all of God? Mother Mira, Realization is of the total Godhead, not a part. Can one get liberation in one life? Mother Mira, it takes many lives and hard spiritual practice. It is not good to think too much of realization. Do the practice for the sake of the divine, not for the sake of liberation. Could you describe realization? Some people think that the realized person becomes like a stone without feeling. Mother Mira, realization is absolute feeling, absolute freedom to love everything and to know everything. It is the unrealized man who is like a stone. The realized man is like a bird, all life and true energy and beauty. What is a realized man like? Mother Mira, like a child at peace in the womb of the mother, knowing he is sustained at every moment by the grace and light of the Divine Mother. Do all the descriptions of enlightenment in various religions refer to the same thing? Mother Mira, the different religions may use various techniques, but in the end they reach the same goal. What is Sahaja? Mother Mira, ordinarily, humans always differentiate where God is 
and is not. In Sahaja, you will experience everything as God. Is there one moment when a person becomes realized? Mother Mira, there are many awakenings in the process, but there is no end to realization. You must always remember that you are traveling forward and be attached to nothing. There is no end to the journey. The good qualities of the mind can be endlessly expanded. You must open more and more, always become more and more loving, more and more peaceful, more and more balanced, more and more harmonious. What is complete realization? Mother Mira, to merge into Paramatman is complete realization. You can realize Paramatman without merging while still embodied. But complete realization happens after death when you no longer have a body. Merging is the end of all lives. You never come back. Although there are a few special exceptions, it is usual for most beings to merge and not return. What happens to all this development of the bodies when we merge with Paramatman? Is it of no further use? Mother Mira, yes, unless Paramatman sends you back for a special task, then that development is of use. At the moment of death, the realized person can choose not to merge, but to return to help others. In the Buddhist Mahayana path, there is the strong wish to become a Buddha for the sake of others and to return to help them. What do you think about this? Mother Mira, Merging into the divine is essential. After that, everything is Paramatman. We do not exist further and only do the bidding of Paramatman. If Paramatman should ask us to return, then we will. We have no wish of our own. I read in a book that one can realize the divine within an hour. Mother Mira, with divine grace, one can realize the divine within a second. Working in the world. What is the best way to live? Mother Mira, it doesn't matter how you live. You can lead a normal life. It is not necessary to consecrate your whole life to the divine. But whatever you do, try to remember the divine as much as possible. Your only aim should be to aspire always for God. Do I have to leave my job and family to do your work? Mother Mira, no. Sadhana can be done within family life. People should stay where they are and turn all their attention to the divine and open to the light. That is everything. You don't have to be near me physically to do my work. Wherever you are, if your aspiration is sincere, I shall be with you. I would prefer not to be in the world at all, but rather spend my time meditating. What do you think? Mother Mira, in general, I recommend a balance between worldly life and spiritual life. One must love the world and its people, not feel a repulsion for them. There is nothing wrong with the world. The divine is everywhere. It is just that usually we are not good enough truly to see the world. Couldn't I retreat from the world and live on a government subsidy? Mother Mira, it is not good to live on someone else's money. You accrue karma. But if I only get a small amount from the government? Mother Mira, karma is karma. Nothing to do with little or smaller or greater or more. I can't live in the world and follow you. Mother Mira, you must learn to bear both worlds. Isn't it best to find a situation in which one need not work so as to devote oneself full-time to spiritual matters? Mother Mira, I do not accept that people do not work. Everyone must work. I am working. Everyone must do what they can. This is not a time for people to withdraw from the world. It is a time to work with the power and love of the divine in the world. 
I don't accept people of any age just coming here to be with me. I want people to come and go. When people are really dedicated to the divine, there is no difference between action and prayer. Do you recommend ashram life? Mother Mira, no, I am not interested in ashrams. I am not interested in founding the movement for people who do not want to work, who want only to sit around and think about what they think is God. People should go on living their ordinary lives. Family life is a very good place to do my work. It teaches people to be unselfish. I want people to be strong, self-reliant, unselfish, and to contribute to the world with whatever skills and gifts they have. I want them to work. All the old separations between holy and worldly are not real. Everything is divine. Everything. All this is God. Everyone must become conscious of this. Some people think that intellectual work is more dignified than handwork, that spiritual work is one thing and worldly work another. Mother Mira, this is not true. There is no difference. For me, there is no difference between any of the forms of work. Do you recommend retreats to practice japa and other meditations? Mother Mira, the divine is everywhere. It is not necessary to go on retreat. But there is no rigid rule about this. If someone desires to go, that is all right. Isn't the important thing not just to do one's work, but to do it as part of our sadhana and with the same care? Mother Mira, yes, you have to give the same importance to your work and sadhana and then balance these. If I concentrate too strongly on the divine while I am working, won't I lose contact with the work and be inefficient? Mother Mira, no. If one thinks of the divine, the work happens more spontaneously and harmoniously. If one approaches work with the mind only, many things can go wrong. Is it selfish to be concerned with our spiritual life, or should we try to help others? Mother Mira, to help others is always best, but balance and synthesis is important. Don't concentrate in only one direction. What is the perfect life? Mother Mira, to realize the divine is the only perfect life.